Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 34th episode of Dragon Quest Slime Time, a DQ Dragon's Den podcast. This is Liam Land. And this is the delightful and always delicious Dwayne. <laughs> uh, tonight's episode is a trip through Dragon Quest history to a time before the merger between Enix and Square when Dragon Quest was Dragon Warrior in North America. After the original incarnation of Enix uh, shut down operations in 1995, uh, Dragon Warrior fans witnessed a rebirth of the series in North America in 1999. Uh, the main social hub for Dragon Warrior's rebirth was the Enix forums. The forums were our go-to hub for Dragon Warrior fandom that myself, Dwayne, and many others would frequent daily um, to talk about current and upcoming releases. Uh, today's guest worked at Enix of America. Um, he was an employee during that time, and he worked on the localizations for many of the amazing releases that the fan base still holds dear to this day. It is our absolute pleasure to welcome to Dragon Quest Slime Time, our old Enix Forum admin and friend, Mr. Nav Agasawara. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Welcome, Nav. Uh, for being on. We really, we really appreciate this. We've been looking forward to this for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is this one has been in uh, writer's block hiatus for like five months now. <laughs> so glad to finally uh, get this going. And uh, for the first time in Slime Time history, we've got actual video. And uh, and that was actually in, um, accidental because you were uh, you were saying, all right, I got my whole room set up. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. It was like five minutes ago. I was like, uh, okay, I guess we're doing video then. Uh, <laughs> so, I made this all pretty and everything. Yeah, is, what's that? I made myself all pretty and everything. Ah. Yeah, I know. I had to do a, a, a quick uh, five-minute shower to get ready. <laughs> so, anyway, so uh, now we have some uh, past history to, uh, with Nob, uh, as he was the admin of the Enix forums while we were active there um, uh, back in the nine, 1999 to 2003 era. Um, so we'll get to that. But uh, first, let's get to know a little bit more about our guest. So, uh, now to set the stage for the audience, um, you worked on the localizations for many amazing titles. For Game Boy Color, there was Dragon Warrior 1 and 2, uh, Dragon Warrior 3, Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, both Tara's Adventure and Kobe's Journey, and for PlayStation, Torneco of the Last Hope and the canceled Dragon Warrior 4 remake. Um, so, how did you start working in the industry as a professional translator, and when did you start at Enix of America? Um... Well, I was living in Japan in between 85 and 95, and uh, in 1988, I found, I discovered Super Mario Brothers at a, at a hotel when we went skiing. Like, you know, you put, you, you pay coins and says, you know, uh, set-top boxes for a fee, and I decided, well, hell, this is fun. And then I realized I'm spending all my money on video games, and I thought, well, shit, this sucks. I need to be able to write this off on taxes. <laughs> so I wrote to uh, EGM, Electronic Gaming Monthly, and uh, I landed a job writing with them. And then I, well, I went to uh, a, a Nintendo Space World, and I ran into uh, Peter Main, who was the executive VP of N Nintendo of America, and I just hit him up with an interview on the spot. And... I didn't think anything of it, but then he ended up sitting beside my boss at the time, which was a game pro, and Wes Nihei sat beside him on the bus, and they got to talk, start talking about me, and Peter Mayne goes, well, I like that kid, you know, what can we pull him for Nintendo, and Wes was, well, all right, fine, and then that, that's how I ended up with Nintendo, and the very first job I had with them was Terra Nigma, and that would be... Oh, wow. Fit. And I love that game. Yeah, and I, I also, love it. Hmm? Yeah, I love it. That was so, so much fun. No, <laughs> well, ter ter you didn't like it? Nightmare. The big uh, well, the maybe they didn't translate, but the game itself was really fun. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, but no, but they didn't. Nintendo had never localized games before, pretty much. They did, they did Earthbound and then. What, right? So uh, they didn't have any idea how to organize files. So when I got my text files, it wasn't a coherent chronological storytelling. It was more like, in this place, 
there's this character, he says this, he says this, but all in chronological order, but only at a certain spot. So I've got no idea what's going on in other parts of the story. So, uh, yeah, that took, that shaved years off my life. And then after that, I guess I worked on Tenchu for PlayStation. And oh, then, uh, right? yeah. the Ninja game. Mm. Yes. I remember that yeah. one too. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, I guess I got a call from, from Enix, Enix USA, from George Torrey, who went and asked Nintendo of America, well, do you know any good translators? And Scott Pelland, who was the uh, editor-in-chief, I guess, of uh, Nintendo Power Magazine, mm -hmm. um, he got, he introduced me to George Torrey, and George just phoned me out of the blue, hi, I hear you're a translator, you want to translate for, for and I'm just like, who are you? <laughs> and like, uh, parts of, do you know any translators who take a lot of torture? Yeah, exactly. And then <laughs> it was like it turned out to be Enix USA, and I go, "Oh, okay, fine." And but he was really guarded too. He was he's very brusque about it, and I was like, "Well, fuck, I don't know if I want to work with these guys." And then he goes, "Well, you know, we're thinking of localizing Dragon Quest One and Two, and they're just I mean, that was it." <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah, I just did, and I went and drove down there, saw him, and then they were like, "Yeah, they Enix USA was a nightmare, Lord. <laughs> they were so <laughs> mean. Cry, I mean, they. Well, it was me only it was only like five guys, right? Like there was there was yeah, Paul, yeah, George, were, John. Yeah, not not a whole lot of guys there. They were. <laughs> it, it was like Enix USA, and like when I before I drove down to Seattle, I was expecting guy. Uh, you know, an office tower, which, you know, it was a suite in an office tower sort of thing. No, it was a, <laughs> a pink stucco building, like a duplex, uh, right on the waterfront of uh, in Seattle there, and half of it was a nail salon. <laughs> and, in the same, in the same I, room? I drove around the block a couple times. The address is right. Well, that's a nail salon. I ain't no, that ain't no Enix. They got no sign up or anything. <laughs> so I finally, okay, decide this has to be the place. I'll just go ask. And I walk up these wooden stairs, wooden brown door, and there they were, like you know, a bunch of nerds sitting around this wooden, with cheap plywood table. I mean, it was a, it was cheap, man. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, 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 never, that. I was like, I've been in better newspaper shacks than this office here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It was like humble beginnings and everything. <laughs> well, second beginning. Well, it was, there's, <laughs> led, there's stories I'd rather not talk about. <laughs> 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 there's legendary talk of cheapness there. Like, uh, yeah. well, when George first went there, the first day, they go. The boss goes, "All right, everybody, we're going. We know we got new guy in. Let's go out for dinner." And the boss didn't. They all they had you know had fun time, drinks and all. And then the boss totted up the bill to the last penny. This is how you owe. This is what you owe. And like, uh, really? Just, yeah. It's, it's just like what For expenses? Yeah. No, no, no expenses. The boss didn't offer to pony up, but no, everybody paid. To oh, wow. any so, yeah, it was it wow. was a shipping operation. So I guess you guys didn't get any comp manicures either. Oh no, 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 that's <laughs> no. <different thing. laughs> We ended up uh, renting the whole place out eventually and putting the QA staff in there. <laughs> the QA staff they got like fifteen guys working on QA for Dragon okay. Quest Seven and stuff. I mean, like, yeah, that's. That's enough. <laughs> nice. That's why so, you know. That's why all those games are buggy as hell. This typos galore. <laughs> uh, See, so you mentioned uh, um, Dragon Quest One and Two is what sold you on. Uh, oh, absolutely, on... yeah. So, so you knew the series well before then. Had you played oh, yeah. many Dragon Quest games before? Oh yeah. The whole I wanted to. The reason I started getting into, I wanted to get into uh, game translations so, because. I fell in love with Dragon Quest IV. Hmm. And I That's didn't my get that too. Too. Yeah, but I didn't realize it had already been translated for the NES. I just I didn't have a clue. So 
And I and then of course I turns out I didn't get to translate Dragon Quest Four anyway. But yeah. But you you did start to work on the PlayStation version though, right? Yes, we did. Yeah, very but just initially. Very very small bit. I got. Yeah. I, we just finished uh, Monster. We were finished. They were finishing up Dragon Quest Seven, and then Dragon Quest Four localization was just starting up. But um. So, oh, so you by the time you got there, seven had already been completed. Oh no, 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 no. Um, I wanted to do seven a lot, hmm. but they said, you know, you're a one man operation. You can't handle this all. <laughs> We've seen the binders. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure oh, that's yeah. true. <laughs> I got stolen all sorts of stuff, and that's why they go, well, look, we got other stuff for you to do. You can do Dragon oh, Quest yeah. two. You can do Monsters two. And you can do tornadoes, so that was, you know, that was that ate up all my time anyway. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine the the poor staff that had to handle all of all t- translating all of that. <laughs> seven, well, seven was given to uh, seven was given to a company basically, and he pulled together a bunch of translators, but they, you know, not not enough quality control. They made a hash of it. And uh, I was asked, you know, do you want to edit this whole thing? And I thought, no, I'm too burnt out. I can't. I'll die. So they got <laughs> another guy to do it. And then, uh, but then they brought up Dragon Quest Four, and I said, well, sure, yeah, I'll do that. But this Dragon Quest Seven was such a mess in Japan as well. Um, the development company, who was it, Heartbeat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Heartbeat was told, well, for Dragon Quest Eight, you're going to have to go into competition mode and, like, compete against other pub- other developers. Okay, so that makes sense. Gets, All right. He gets, gets run with it. And, Dra- and Heartbeat, the guy there, got mad. And he goes, no, I'm not doing this. So uh, he said... So they, they got... So they, so they had... Me start on four, and I got a little bit of chapter three, and I just did maybe a page worth. Then I got a call, like, no, forget it, heartbeat build. You know, we're not doing Dragon Quest, we're not localizing Dragon Quest four. So that was yeah, that. yeah. We were we were all there. We were all heartbroken when that happened, yeah, and, we were, and we were all so bothering like, you yeah. too. Oh yeah, yeah. people were yeah. mad. Cheers, thirty thousand dollar job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it it wasn't even that. We were so irrational. We were like hitting you up on the side, like, "Hey, hey, hey, just give us the code. We'll, you know, yeah, we'll get it to the right <laughs> fan translators." Which you, know, you guys all wanted to be code, or you guys all wanted to be admin. <laughs> <laughs> and really, I gotta, I gotta hand it to both you, uh, you and Justin afterwards, because like you guys really had a level of honesty and transparency with fans, where you guys would just like come out and say, "Hey, look." This is what happened. This is yeah. how much it would cost. This is what the market is like. It's just not possible. Yeah, well, we were, you know, we got pretty much free reign to do what we wanted on now uh, as admins there. And uh, I mean, there were a lot of things I wanted to say more and, you know, <laughs> than just tell people to seek a flying fuck. But, you know, we were <laughs> representing <laughs> a publisher, so we couldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I distinctly remember a couple of us just hitting you up on the side and be like, you know, just drop the code over here. No one has to know, and you were just very professional about it, telling us to you know politely f off. So, so like really quick, just like stepping back a couple steps. So when you used to translate games, mm-hmm. would you get an actual? retail copy and have to dump the script like a ROM hacker would or did you get something like a dev a dev build with the debug code and such um you know it, it really depended a lot I mean Pokemon in the beginning I was you know just using my own ROMs to read both, but they give me the files at least so I could familiarize myself with the games but some stuff some games are just I just get given a text file and I just run with that so quite often I wouldn't have a clue how many Pokemons a certain person had, you know. So yeah, it was just like it was a lot of guessing, and I just go, okay, fuck it, you know. You guys edit, you guys edit it, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You don't pay me enough money to, you know, no. 
for me to like open up the game and check. Oh yeah, okay, no, he does have three Pokemon. They're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> just no. So back when you're working uh, at Enix, what was it like essentially translating the company's flagship franchise, like being in charge of that pretty much all by yourself? Well, yeah, it was just, I don't know. I mean, it was just, it was just a job. It just, it was still a, you know, I still get text files and I still look at it and go, oh Christ, okay. But <laughs> what, Dragon Quest was really good because the, um, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Hori is like a crazy good writer. His his prose is like is spot on. So it was difficult that way. Um, Pokemon's writing is terrible, by the way. So uh, <laughs> that was a nightmare to figure out. Well, I could get away with anything with Pokemon though, because it was it was the writing was so convoluted in the first place. Anyway, so I just have to straighten it out. And boom, this is it. But with Dragon Quest, it was more of a challenge to capture the feel of what Mr. Hori had written. No. Especially when you're dealing with a character limit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, 18 characters per line and then two lines per window. So yeah, so that was that was hard. I mean, congratulations takes up so much room. Is you know, yeah. Were there and, any times where you had just where you had like a line where you translated it and like localized it perfectly, and you just wanted to flip the table because it was like one or two characters too long? All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Just like yeah, just like just like banging my head forehead. Yeah, just. It's like this is perfect, and then you go, "Oh Christ, I'm over by one law, one character." Yeah, it was it was bad, but with uh, Dragon Quest, with Enix at least, they were willing to listen to and let me fool around with the font table, so I could actually create my own fonts. So I put, I got them to put together uh, apostrophe, apostrophe T and apostrophe S, and and treated that as one letter, so I could. Oh, save that's a good idea. Oh, nice. I was gonna say it had a it had a pretty clear and very and very legible font for its time. And being a graphic designer, I'm all about fonts. So it's just like yeah, okay, text yeah, matters. So, yeah. So yeah. So it was yeah. Doing the apostrophe apostrophe letter combo was like that allowed me to put like you know 19, 20 characters per line. Hmm. But that's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, of course, um, and then I also had them do the. Uh, for weapons and items, like I, I told them, okay, I need a sword icon, I need an axe mm -hmm. icon, I need a hammer icon, like so I could do iron and then like a sword icon for iron sword. And and we fought like we fought like two cats in a sack over like, me and George because George was like, I don't want to tell like you next to Japan that, and I go, well, I ain't doing. Anything. I'll, I'm not doing Falcon Sword written F L C N S W D. I'm just not doing that. <laughs> yeah, like and, it just I mean, it just doesn't I mean, I get I get why you would have to do it, but it just like from the player per, uh, perspective, it just doesn't look good. Yeah, but it was, it was either or, you know, mm -hmm. do you want Falcon Sword icon or do you want F L C N S W D in all right. caps? You know, I said like, me, I didn't like F L C N. I said just yeah. like, no, we're not doing that. You know, yeah, I prefer the icon with the uh with as much of the real name as you could as you could get to like the paraphrase where you just take out all the vowels. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. So but George That's was fun. like, well, I don't want to go to Enix Japan about that. And you know, like, well, you're gonna do it because I ain't doing that the other way. <laughs> so we you know me and George fought like, fought a lot. We're good friends, so, but yeah. So was George Tory just kind of the the go between between Enix US and Enix Japan? Yeah, but he 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 went to bat for a, for a lot of things for me. So I, I mean, I don't know exactly what the hell he was up to, but yeah, I mean, he but he was there all the freaking time. I'd phone him. I'd phone Sunday night at eleven o'clock with a dumb question like, "What's this about?" And he'd answer on the first ring. 
you know, it was just, and he, he ended up going to the hospital one night because he uh, got a nosebleed that wouldn't stop. Oh, man. And they basically had to drag him away from the table. I'm waiting to follow the call from Enix Japan. They go, no, you're going to the hospital. <laughs> so, yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking of the funeral parlor. <laughs> What's that? George runs a funeral parlor now. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I'm serious. Just like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what a career change. That's that's <laughs> that's definitely a pretty big uh, departure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was when he was with uh, he was with Square before that. Mm -hmm. So he was really pissed when they murdered. <laughs> it's like I just got away from you guys. Yeah. <laughs> So you've stated that you're responsible for uh, Roto being translated as Loto. Um, yes. What what kind of flexibility did you have in coming up with those naming conventions? Car Blanche. I did anything. Really? I did. Yeah, I just, I just did. Why did you do it that way? Oh, fuck. He never told me. I like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like yeah, he goes like you tell me you, you misspelled the boss of Dragon Quest Seven's boss wrong. Oh, that's work. <laughs> it's okay, everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when when translating uh, Torneco the Last Hope, you previously mentioned uh, the the team that had worked on it up to the point where you joined had really botched the job. Um, how bad was it, and how much work did you have to do in such a short time? Um, also with uh, one arm, with one arm in a sling, right? Yeah. I did it all, but I I threw away the entire text because it was unusable. It was a disaster. The whole file that I can't remember, who the fuck was it DNA or something. I think they're a local Vancouver company, but they made a total hash of it. So I just looked at the text file and I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, then I just hucked it, and I just uh, did it from the word go. I, uh, well, I guess I took Howard through it in three weeks. Wow. Yeah, and, Howard, and, yeah. and you I were, had to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, go ahead. You, 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 were, uh, you, were, uh, you had one arm in a sling for part of it, right? Yeah, I, had to, I uh, dislocated my shoulder real bad, so I had to go in for surgery to get that repaired. And it was, you know, stay. Ended up with an overnight hospital stay. And then on day two, I was like basically up and about. And the doctors wanted me to stay one more night. And I go, come on, doc. If I have to stay here, don't matter, right? And he goes, oh, okay, all right. We'll discharge you. So I went home and I phoned up Enix USA. Hi, George, I'm back home. And I just like, and he goes, oh, okay, good. And I just had some just back from shoulder surgery, got an arm in a sling. And he goes, well, you're going you're gonna to meet the deadline, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, that's the only time well, that's not wasn't the only time I was, I was yelling and screaming at him like, hey, <laughs> but yeah and then uh and that's how my kids got into those games too like i just oh, my nice. arm was in a sling so i said well look i need you know i'm gonna tell you what to do hit the control do that and do the copy and pasting work right now and I got both my kids, you know, like six and eight or something like that to do that. And, and you got, got name you got their credit. name in the credits, yeah. Yeah, they're in the credits, yeah. that's right. Because I, I noticed that too. I was playing, um, recently playing Dragon Dragon Warrior Monsters 2 Tara's Adventure for Game Boy Color. And when the credits right. rolled, the translation team appeared uh, not only to list you, but also in, involved several family members as well. So Yeah, those uh, are my kids, yeah. <laughs> and so they were there involved as well. Yeah, and my youngest daughter didn't get the help because she was like, you know, three months old or something. So she was really pissed at us. And just like, how come I didn't get credits of Dragon Quest? Come on. <laughs> you didn't actually help. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> You're just lying there in your crib. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, why? <laughs> Okay. Um, so we did talk a little bit before about the Dragon Warrior 4 uh, cancellation. Um, Dwayne, did you have any other questions that you wanted to ask? You had mentioned in a previous interview that that uh, Dragon Quest 7 had a lot of uh, development issues. Can you touch on any of that? Because like, I'm just I'm just curious at what happens. Um, I 
all I know is that well, the graphics were were like really primitive looking, huh? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think it was you know, and then, learning 3D, and, yeah, and even then all, you could still see the guidelines in the sprites. Yeah, it was all pretty blocky looking, and this was in a time when you know Final Fantasy seven VII and eight were already out. So Hori was really, really mad about the graphics quality, and right in the last minute, he he was going, "I want to redo this whole damn thing." And this has already been, you know, the game's already been in gestation for years and years, and he threatened to shut down the whole project. And so Heartbeat and Enix Japan like rushed around. Look, we'll add cutscenes. Animation, so that's why they got oh, the animation cutscenes to appease Hori san. But oh, well, you boy. know how buggy seven is, so I mean, that thing was crashing left, right, and center. Hmm. So, yeah, he, you know, that's why you know, Heartbeat was out. Yeah, so then, so then he saw the uh, he saw the cutscenes and he was just like, mm, perfect, yes, well, no, <laughs> that's what was missing. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, maybe he pulled the mighty number no. nine line. It's better than nothing. The problem, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, well, you know, you like I said, like seven was like a bug filled monster. It would crash you any which way, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, the one one dungeon where the the, ro- the killer ro- killer machine or the killer robot is the boss. I was playing that. And then he had this dying message was like, you know, some or another. And then the screen went blank. And then it all turned jagged. And I saw, oh, that's a neat, neat way to present it. Yeah, that's a, like, the hidden ending. Yeah, no, it just crashed. <laughs> and, and yes, yeah. And of course, I didn't say for you. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Dwayne, do you have Let anything else? Let me go take a peek. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Wait, just, okay. <laughs> awesome. I like, I so like Dwayne, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's read all the books on his shelf now. Okay. Let's I see. can't see his video feed, but I'll just take your word for it. <laughs> That's what uh, that's what I do all the time. Just like when people like have stuff in the background, I'll just I'll just stare at the books or like the DVDs that they'll have. It's like yeah. oh, what's that? I should have at least put up some kind of like Zoom style background with that has like actual Dragon Quest like merch or something in the back to make it look like I'm not. Just I thought saying thought about kitchen. doing that with mine, but um, no, you there... got a fine background. Oh yeah, it's it's just Nicholas Cage my pillows my... or Nicholas yes, Cage body yes, pillows. My, my Nick Cage uh, pillowcases that yeah. my girlfriend bought for me when who's, she was who's the other one? <laughs> uh, uh, what what's the other pillow there? The astronaut. Oh, that's, that uh, that's also Nick Cage. Oh, all right. I thought it was Tommy Wiseau. Uh, all, uh, all four of them are Nick Cage. Uh, and they're all just like these really terrible Photoshops. She just she just randomly found them on Amazon. And she mm-hmm. says, yes, Dwayne is getting this. <laughs> she ordered nice. it immediately. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, 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 sorry. Notes, just like, what was my, neck, my next question in the notes? Because I can't see them because I'm recording the video. Uh, it says your work has a unique place in DQ history. That 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 one. Yes. What does that you want say? Want me to just read it? Because please, <laughs> please do that. <laughs> yeah, so that you don't just read exactly what I just say. Yes. Uh, all right. So uh, your your work has a unique place in DQ history. Looking back, uh, what are your thoughts on that, and how would you like it to be remembered? It's <laughs> a tough question. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, you know, I just like it's just a job, right? But uh, I mean, I was really, really proud of having got to work on those. I saw it like this is this is really neat. But I didn't. But the thing was, I mean, look, Dragon Quest wasn't that big here, mm-hmm. so it was like, you know, I was thinking, well, this is cool. I'm I'm bringing over something I really, really like, and I'm trying to show, you know, the fans how good Dragon Quest really is, but mm. I mean, I wasn't really under any illusions. Like, you know, I knew, I like, po- you know, Pokemon was already putting me on the map anyway, so it was mm. like, plus I was getting paid peanuts on it, jeez. <laughs> and more or less, you know, more, and like, 
being slave driven by George, who's like, you know, like the Enix was terrible. <laughs> like no pay, no deadlines, right? So <laughs> And so, yeah, George would be on my case. He'd phone me up at 6 o'clock. You know, he'd phone me on a weekend, Saturday night and late at night. And go, hey, you working? Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. And then, you know, you know, I just go, yeah, get. Yes, I am. <laughs> no sense to you, asshole. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it, it, was, it was fun, but it was frantic, I guess. Yeah. Was, yeah it really like. it really is a neat a neat spot in in history because when when dragon quest fans were first starting to post stuff on dim internets um it's it was basically people who grew up with it on nes and just uh discovered oh there are there were snes games that we didn't get and yep. then and then emulation showed up and emulation like we started getting this little new influx of fans with 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 emulation and with NX coming back, it really set off a, a little mini rebirth because there's more more and more people playing the games and getting access to them. And and I think what's what's nice about the localizations that you did is because back then people were hearing about all the things that were censored and you weren't censoring quite as much. So so people got to see that more unfiltered and they like that. So it's so it it definitely is kind of a unique spot, and then the merger happened, and everyone's like, "What's going on? <laughs> what yeah. are they doing to us?" So yeah. let, let's actually talk about. Uh, we have we have a, a question uh, um, uh, from one of the one of our denizens about um, uh, the censorship uh, a little bit later, but uh, let's actually talk about the old NX forums. Um, so uh, NX forums member SDP Warrior actually created a replica NX forum. <laughs> Uh, after the after the uh, forums were shut down uh, for a handful of us nostalgic fans, um, oh. so you can you can visit it at nx.proboards.com. Um, oh, that's still up. That is still up. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I did I did a uh, I did a Google search on that one and, uh, oh, and found it. Yeah, no, and, and if you still writing if you, a fan fiction? Yeah. What's that? Remember that lady that used to write fanfic? She, she, she. I'm used... sure there were quite a few. <laughs> yes. No, there was that lady. Some, some lady that wrote a huge fanfic, and I mean, I just glance at it and go, "Okay, that's got nothing new with me." But yeah, I, you know, I let her, I let her do her thing, and I let all sorts of people do their things on that side. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so the the SD uh, SDP Warriors uh, NX forums uh, pro boards uh, is is a an exact replica. If you want to see the way the structure used to look like, uh, where you had NX General and then you had a bunch of sub forum forums, then you had Rad or Robot Alchemic Drive, <laughs> Grandia, Star <laughs> Ocean, Dragon Warrior General. <laughs> Dragon Warrior 7, Dragon Warrior 3, Dragon Warrior 1 and 2, Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, Torneco, Valkyrie Profile, Busta Groove, the dance game, and then uh, there's a couple of uh, additional stuff at the bottom that he, I think he added in new. Um, right. well, I'll have to grab that off you off Twitter later. That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. Still, it looks like the last po post was maybe uh, oh, actually like 2018. Hmm. Somebody oh, actually saw it. Wow. Yeah, but before then, before then, it was like 2005. So, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, I think somebody probably came in and was like, hey, who's here? And then nobody responded. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I should go in there and set up, uh, write about 800, 800 yeah. threads. Fuck you, knob. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, but so, all right. You, you've described the uh, NX of America forums as, as fun but frustrating experience. Um, I met many of us saw everything that you had to deal with. Um, you know, the frustrations that often come through in your posts. I mean, you were professional about it, but you could feel the tense. Uh, well, um, yeah. I mean, it, it was, of it. I, I, sh I should have been a lot. I've learned my lesson as to not to take stuff like that seriously or personally, you know. But back then, I mean, you know, fucking hothead. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was just, like, racism and misogyny and flame wars and just all that sorts of, like, childish bullshit that still kind of goes on today, on, but only on Twitter. I was going to say, as the internet yeah. was back then. 
yeah. Well, exactly. I didn't know how to block uh, IP accounts, Sam. So once yeah. I learned how to, you know, could start could, you know, shutting out IPs, I was like, oh, okay, good. I can shut this fucking moron down. <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember the IP bans. Uh, yeah, and I remember and the, IP bans kept on catching AOL people. Remember AOL? Yeah. So those yeah, guys had yeah, dynamic yeah. IPs. So. Yep. Yeah, it was right. all routed out of Virginia, right? Yeah, so I kept yeah, on. I that. And some people kept, you know, some innocent people were getting caught in the crossfire. Hmm. Like they dealt ban off, and then here comes the trolls again. So <laughs> the women. I was about to say, like, they're from AOL, so it's not like it was a huge loss. Wow, no. <laughs> Back in the 90s, <laughs> I, don't, it probably I, don't, I don't think. <laughs> you know. I mean, they're all people. What the hell? So so did you did you fully know what you were getting into when you took on that forum admin role? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought it was, you know, I thought it'd be fun. And it, well, it was, you know, for the most part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do like giving back to the fans. Mm -hmm. And just to hear, you know, I, I want to hear what they have to say. And if they want, you know, if they want to criticize my writing, that's cool. I mean... What can I change to make it better for you guys? Like, I'm a fan too, right? Yeah. So I wasn't yeah. just like, you know, I wasn't thinking my writing is like, like I don't have any illusions about my writing being, you know, Pulitzer level or anything like that. So, <laughs> I don't remember that. Were people you know, they were criticizing like, the localization to you? Yeah, well, yeah, but you know, but if fans were gonna go like, oh, we don't like this or we don't like that, I'm not, no, 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 I'm on the list, no, right? You know. <laughs> you, feedback and I'll, you know, I'll try to work it in if it's reasonable. Yeah, yeah exactly. As long as, it, as it's as it's uh, constructive, it's like yeah, yeah, it's fine. Come on, because yeah. like because like they want just like they want to enjoy it and if, like good, yeah, for sure. Like, and I want you know, like, I'm feedback. a fan too. Like I said, so I want you know, I'm perfectly willing to listen to feedback. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to get pissed at me for what do you call it, you know, for saying, well, no spamming, Christ, you know, then they then they get all mad. And then when I try to be like, okay, well, all right, okay, I'll try to be more professional. I'll try to be, I'll try to treat them as if I was a customer representative and then be, you know, and then they go like, you're a phony. <laughs> so <I'm> just like, <laughs> <laughs> no. Fucking winning at all. Oh, Sorry. Man. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> because we could start to see you you getting frustrated in some of your, you know, some of your posts you could kind of read into that. And a handful of us, including uh myself and uh Ignatia Seven, who went by uh Tug or the unknown gamer back then, we used to just kind of hit you up on the side, be like, dude, are you okay? Are you <laughs> like we would just apologize to you on behalf of everybody else? But like yeah. we, we <laughs> could see the no no weight of it was was there. Oh. Yeah, well, it just, you know, it, well, I wasn't getting paid for doing that. And then just to be, just to get a lot of abuse from some of these people, it's just like, come on, like, you know, I quit, fuck you, I don't have no, I, I don't. <laughs> and you had to get quit well, twice, time, right? Yeah, I quit twice. The first time yeah. I quit was because it was like, it was too much was, was about me instead of talking about Dragon Quest and all the rest. It was like the focus was on me, and I said, "Well, you know, that's not doing the fandom any favors. That's not doing Enix any favors. So, like, okay, forget it. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll take myself out of the picture because it's just not helping anybody. You know, you guys go back to do your Dragon Quest thing, but don't you know? Forget Nob even existed. That you know, fine, yeah, Bye, stupid, right, but." <laughs> Yeah, and then I did come back. I you know, I think about it now. I like, eh, maybe I should know, but twenty twenty hindsight. Yeah, I think I was around like uh, like twenty three or twenty four around that time that that you quit the second time, and then we were all kind of bummed, but we were, we all we all got it, you know, like everything that was going on uh, there and everything you had to deal with. We we understood, you know, all of that. Yeah, well, it was fun. I mean, I you know, I'd do it again. <laughs> Really? <laughs> we can ask the folks at uh, at Square Enix. So after the forum sunset, uh, the fan base was uh, fractured. Um, so without uh, the forum, some people weren't kept in touch via a messenger, email, 
uh, back in the day with ICQ, whatever mm-hmm. people did in 2003. Um, but most went their separate ways. Uh, Slime Nights would come after the merger, but there was that kind of gap between the Enix forums and Slime Nights uh, where the merger was going into effect. Um, much of the Enix forums audience was lost, unfortunately. Like uh, it, it just seemed like a complete marketing failure not to have migrated that audience to another platform. But um, but that's what happened. Yeah. When I'm- yeah. Um, yeah, that's too bad. But yeah, well, like once merger happened, I mean, Enix USA, the whole lot of them got canned. So, so there's okay. no continuity. Yeah, we were all fired. Well, I, I was, I was freelance. I was never an employee of Enix, but all you know, George, everybody was out the door. So, yeah, yeah, yeah and never, nobody wanted to carry the flag after that. And, mm. and like, what's crazy was, I mean, according to a couple other people, like no one was even asked if they wanted to move to L.A. or if they had a place for them or like anything like that. They're all just like, oh, no, you're cut. You're gone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were just. And like, that's uh, that has to be disheartening, especially when you put so much work for uh, for. Well, you know, sure. Yeah, years. we at Enix, when it was it was chaos. But we all look at George still talk about it. We go, fuck, you know, that sucked those days. But we've never had as much fun since or before. We, we That was so, it was anarchy and we got to do, we got away with murder lair. So, yeah, yeah. that was fun. <laughs> well, you Even know what? If you, if, you, if you and George want to come back and be our admins for the uh, SDP port, Warriors Annex Pro Boards, we'd love <laughs> to have you. Yes. <laughs> I, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot less uh, stuff to administrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's mean, like, it's just like back then we had five American uh, Dragon Quest fans. Now we have like a solid eight. So yeah. I mean, yeah. get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Moral of the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we have some yeah, feedback. It's from amazing us. to see how many, how big the community has gotten. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah there's like been a lot. Guys- I, I see, you know, and then I see stupid, I see, see stupid drama popping up as well, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's that, especially on Twitter. Um, yep. Yes, yeah, delete but, your Twitter. Just That's just a good rule in general. That's just what Vladdy did. Twitter. <laughs> Vladdy just stopped posting. He's like, I'm done. This is stupid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not dropping any names, but yeah, I was just like, what the Christ? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so we we have some feedback from uh nx forumers um mm-hmm. a couple a couple of old nx forumers uh who posted on dragon's den now um mm-hmm. and a couple of denizens as well so uh I, i've got some feedback for uh the first is from uh ignatia seven formerly the unknown gamer or tug mm-hmm. um and he says every time i spoke to knob on aim he was always fine with the general conduct i think it was the racist stuff that popped up from a few people we had to ban that was the problem um, he remembers bugging Knob about updates for Dragon Warrior 7 leading up to, to its release. And he, quote, like a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot of bugging. Um, he said, I guess if I had to ask Knob anything, um, mostly how life has been since Enix and where he's gotten to since, what projects or anything life affirming. I got a couple of dogs. <laughs> 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 I paid off my house, and I don't know. I mean, just it's pretty boring domestic stuff, you know. Um, I ended up working with Sega for a while, and you know, so like they drag up for what is it, PSO on D on DS and the Yakuza games, and this and that. Nice. Um, yeah, you were. You were- you were but, saying you worked on which which Yakuza games? Zero and and zero and five, five, five. and zero, five and mm-hmm. zero. Yeah. But to be honest, games, game translation, game localization is there's no money in it. There's so there really isn't much money, and it's becoming like an entry level, you know, English job, just like English teaching is in Japan now. It's like. I you know I get routinely get offered you know half my rate and they go that's the best we can do and I go well I can't work on that so I, mostly my work is with advertising agencies now. Hmm. And the marketing stuff is really boring. <laughs> I mean I love to do games but 
you know, got to be the rent. Yeah, right. Yeah, that makes sense. So here's here's kind of a quick a quick question in regards to that, and something that I've that I've wondered about too. Um, I think I think Liam originally wanted to know just like what do you uh, what do you think of the Dragon Quest localization style now? I don't know. Oh, really? You haven't played them? I don't. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't play localized games because. Uh, oh, okay. Why? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, in Japanese, right? And I just go because me. I mean, I'm a translator. I know how much content gets cut. Okay. I, right. I know how much content gets cut. I know how much, how little the humor comes across. Or, you know, I'm not denigrating my fellow, my mutuals, but I really don't know how how good they're translating. You know, I, I well, I do play games that like uh i know about me if my mutuals go like I, I translate this game and i'll pick it up if it's a cheap game and i'll play it in english and just see what's done but i'm always like looking at it and go i know what this said in, in japanese and it's and I, like the way i get mad at reading subtitles in movies i go no that's wrong and you know i'll, oh, yeah. I'll focus on I'll focus on wrong things instead of just enjoying the ride. So that's that's my big problem. So and something just like really quick as a as a freelancer, something something I've noticed lately because you've worked freelance for the longest time. I've seen a lot of kind of newer localization mm -hmm. folks talking about working on games and essentially like they don't they don't necessarily agree with the message or the type of game. So they want to rewrite the game to kind of, to conform to like whatever, just like, and I've been seeing a lot of that lately, like a lot. Yeah. That's just like, you know, yeah. You know, no, don't you dare. You know, I mean, I mean, if it's taking out racist language or sexist language. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, I could no problem. Uh, but if you're, I mean, you know, like I'm a translator first, and I'm a good, I'm look, I'm a good translator. I could take a look at the English and I can translate it in a way that it, that works after translation. I don't do all that much in a way of localizing to be. If it strays too far from the original Japanese, I think I've done the fans a disfavor. And that's, you know, I'm not, I'm disrespecting the original writer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was one major localization company that everybody knows that I worked with. And I didn't agree with the way they do things at all. That was a very poor fit for me. I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. <clears throat> yeah, that, that actually kind of coincides with uh, um, some other feedback uh pendy from dragon's den was asking did you ever have to censor anything or tone down any language for any uh any dragon warrior games that you worked on i don't think so not for dragon quest for pokemon yes because there were like drunks and like uh guys like you know off their face on magic mushrooms and you know, yeah, or like guys is talking often the about, case. yeah, and the guys talking about you know t testicles and stuff, just like no, 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 no. These are games rated E10, so no. <laughs> but with Dragon Quest, I don't recall any instances of like having to censor anything. Not even puff puffs. Uh, powder puff massage, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah well yeah well that was, that was a hard one because you have to know the context of what puff puff is and now you have to know your dragon ball hmm. dragon ball or even dr slump yeah you have to know your toriyama manga to make that connection but yeah puff puff was a hard one <laughs> <laughs> i love how that still I did a pretty good job pulling it off yeah that's still like a joke within the series to this day i mean they they have accolades for getting every single puff puff in dragon quest 11 for example yeah but, uh yeah so um bob the almighty from the nx forums uh mentions i absolutely loved do you remember the name 
The name rings a bell, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely loved the old NX forums. To this day, it remains my favorite time on the internet. The wait for Dragon Warrior 7 was painful. Uh, it was such a great time to see Dragon, the Dragon Warrior brand revitalized in the West with the Game Boy Color remakes and Dragon Warrior Monsters getting titles released and the anticipation of Dragon Warrior 7. Uh, I'd like to know what future plans Enix had for the series had Enix of America not closed and if the merger with Square had anything to do with that. Uh, I would love to know if the Dragon Quest V PS2 game was in the planning stages at all. Had the merger not? No idea about that at all. Like you know, I was like I said, I was never in the office very long. I'd go mm -hmm. down there, you know, once once every three four months, drive down there, just you know, shoot the brew, take a box of cookies, here you go and pass them around. But beyond that, oh, and then when they did shut down, when when the merger happened, I went down there with a big cardboard box and I stole a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind still? of swag? I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that for the cops. I'm just, just curious. I don't know CDs, uh, stuffies. Let's see. What else did I steal? You got it there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Drink the Zippo. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, wow, nice. <laughs> hey, there you go. There. The slime Zippo. There you go. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. You know, just, yes, kind of went in there and went into the back room and just, like, grabbed a whole bunch of stuff. And then George saw me try to steal the $1,000 uh, PlayStation, the black PlayStation, mm -hmm. you know, the development kit. I tried to steal one of those, and he's like, no, you can't have that. That's mine. And <laughs> 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 can't, I'm stealing that. <laughs> yeah. No, right. so was like, you know, we were stripping the place. You know, they were stripping the place down too. Just like, fuck, no way. <laughs> you know, that's severance pay, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, to answer a little bit of Bob's uh, Bob's question, uh, Justin said long, long, long time ago that he did he did get to see a little bit of eight when it was still in uh, development. So, mm. I mean, it's in five. Five came out before eight did. So, it's certainly plausible that they were working on it at the time. How many years yeah, after I, I, four yeah. came out in Japan did five? It was like was it like two and a half years or something? I feel yeah, like yeah, five five came out in two thousand and four, so it was probably in uh, development for at least two years. Okay, hmm. yeah, I wouldn't know. I mean, you know, I was never in part of that loop at all. It's just you no know, subcontractor, right? So just here, here's the files, here's the games, go. I don't think they even gave me games. Fuck. <laughs> I think the only games they gave me was Rad. No, they didn't. They gave me... What is that? Oh, yeah. they, they didn't <laughs> give me Rad. They gave me a copy of the game before Lad. And they go, here, just work off that. And I go, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? Not Dynamite Heady. I can't remember what the heck it was called. It was like uh, Remote Control Dandy. No, okay. I don't remember that one. Yeah, no. if that's if that's not a game, it 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 needs to be just just by that title alone. <laughs> yeah, remote control. Yeah, and it was made by the same guys, right? Remote control. Okay. Dan, and then Rad, and then uh, I think they also made something for DS eventually. That same bunch. You know, but I guess, I guess, yeah, DS game where you same idea. You control robots, giant robots. Yeah, Rad was fun. <laughs> Yeah, Rad Rad got a surprisingly good good reception. I just thought I just thought it was just kind of one of those side games that they put out just because they didn't have any Dragon Quest games to release, but uh, yeah, it wound up being kind of fun and actually had a little bit of a fan base. Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, it was <laughs> I mean, zero budget on that, man. Holy cow. <laughs> they wanted to use me as the uh voiceover recording producer and i just and i was like no i got no experience in that field <laughs> so they hired uh they, a they local, want... hmm? oh sorry go ahead yeah they hired a local seattle uh language translation company and they just it was a mess <laughs> They just went into the studio and they just used their own employees as voice. There were no voice actors for Rad at all. And Dr. Viltz was voiced by this uh, 
ex-Marine dude who was all gung-ho about telling me about weapon systems they use, but was still talking about the job itself. So, yeah, <laughs> it hmm. was. So it, originally, it was, they wanted the, you to do the voice acting for it, or they wanted you to just be like the me casting director? a voice actor and a voice, you know, and I was supposed to do the directing as well, and I'm just like, <laughs> I, know, uh, yeah. I don't know but I've, I've 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 heard your voice and i've definitely heard i've heard some bad voiceovers in video game history so you would have done yeah. fine well, rad's i think you would have done bad. fine too <laughs> well rad's um, pretty bad though holy cow <laughs> Um, yeah. So, uh, Barurian from Dragon's Den uh, asks, um, when coming up with the spell names for the uh, the remakes um, for Dragon Warriors, uh, were, adapta uh, were the adaptations made solely on the Japanese name, or were you given the free reign to name them as you as you saw? Um, I think most oh. of the spell names were already written, weren't they, from, from the NES versions? Mostly, yes. So yeah. I think we I think we just lived with those names, and where I got the most free reign on Dragon Quest was with monsters because that a lot of it was like not localized yet. So I got to you know write up a whole bunch of those names, but with the mainline games, no, because they were already they were already there, like Bang and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bang. You know, just names that didn't make all that much sense, but okay, fine, you know, whatever. That's good. <laughs> you know, but uh, Monster 2 was a fun one, yeah. Uh, so when doing the localization, this is also a question from uh, Burian, uh, when doing the localization of the Dragon Warrior games, was there ever a time when program where programming balance was required to fix an issue that we didn't know about in the Japanese version at the time? Oh, that's a good question. That I wouldn't know, except for the ones, you know, except for me changing the font table and the uh, icons, but I don't recall anything where I go, well, like, you're going to have to change the programming here. To, no, I don't recall doing that. I don't, I don't recall any instances of that. I didn't want to change anything. It was just, you know, they all they wanted was just drop the text into the Japanese text space and be done with it they, they just want it quick and dirty right mm. so you know i'd be yelling at george what do you mean i got only seven letters to rain these fucking items <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not doing falcon sword <laughs> <laughs> um so I, hmm? I think that's all we have in, in terms of the uh the fan feedback uh, Dwayne, did you have you had some additional questions you wanted to talk about in terms of uh, Pokemon and Savage yeah. Fellows? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, you've you've also worked you you have worked on two of the biggest like video game franchises ever, and Pokemon just turned twenty five years old. So so what was it like? And I know this is a pretty broad broad question. You've touched on it a lot, but what was it like working on Pokemon? frustrating <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it was it was very strange because i was always a subcontractor as far as they were concerned so like you know they they accept you know they go jump and i was just, the only answer i was supposed to give was how i but yeah so if i have a question for them they're like well we'll get back to you or oh, no yeah, nah. exactly. And uh, well, they well. For instance, I just saw on Twitter there was like a a guidebook on gold and silver on you know do not Pokemon is always plural or so, you know there's no S on the end and well like, nobody ever gave me pay, you know directions like that. So I do it and then they go well no that's wrong idiot no okay shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it was yeah it, it, it was pretty abusive <laughs> <laughs> yeah well for uh for diamond and pearl um i was working from about august to about november on it 
or not, whatever year it was. And then uh, come December, I get a phone call from NOA, and they go, "Okay, well, a couple of uh, big shot, a couple of big wig, you know, game freak guys are coming into into Seattle, and they want to see you." Why? And they go, well, they want to explain how the, uh, you know, they want to explain some of the stories and uh, tax concerns they have. Okay. I've already submitted two weeks ago. What are you going to tell me now? What the fuck? You know, you should, we should have done this in July. But no, we want to see you come down and, you know, come down and, okay, all right, fine. And, um, I ended up not being to go because it was a snow, it was the ice storm in Seattle. So I just turned around at the border. But yeah, it was just like, come on, guys, do a little planning here. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, Dwayne, you had a you had a question about the Yakuza series, or did we? Yes. Well, I just had just had a uh, a couple things. So uh, so. Uh, uh, so, uh, so the Akaza series. Uh, which ones did you work on again? Five and zero. He mentioned yeah, yeah. five and zero. So, so were you basic? Were you building off of the things that the team had worked on previously, or were you kind of more doing your own thing? Oh, familiarity with the Yakuza series at all. So it was just like, oh, okay. so I, you know, so I when I told. Yeah, so when I got told you're going to be working on five, I got, oh, okay. So I, I rushed out and got my uh, Japanese agent to send me five, and they started playing, yeah. But, yeah, and then a lot of watching YouTube videos of, you know, thank God for YouTube videos. But, yeah, doing <laughs> just based on what I, could, what I could dig up on my own, I wasn't given any, like, most low translation jobs they don't give you the game or anything you're just given a text file and off you go right so yeah <laughs> so i know i know certain i know certain characters have have uh have a uh, dialects did that uh did that impact how how their lines were translated yes it did but it was pretty loosey-goosey uh, for yakuza 5 and 0 um the, the the team at Sega now are a lot more on the ball about dialects and figuring that out. But the agency I was working for was a lot less strict about that. So we were going, we were told like Tokyo people would speak pretty formally without incontinent contractions or slang. And then the far as the south you go, it's going to get more slangy. It's just like, oh, okay, all right, all right. So people don't have to talk in Texas. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, being yeah. just like being being there, I can understand. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was, you know, it was a little frustrating because because people in Tokyo would talk in slang, in a slangtacular fashion, and they just would no change it all into Tokyo formal formal talk and like, well, that's boring but okay all right you know you pay the money <laughs> I mean, you know i mean, just like I'm just yeah okay how high <laughs> were there any characters that were a lot harder to translate than others because of that mm, well majima's a hard one because he's very florid and the problem is like even the japanese text is like is not very consistent because when Majima's in in a lot of his side stories, he's very his character changes, man. He's more compassionate. But when he's uh, when he's when he's just you know Kiryu Chan, he's just like a nut. But when he's in submissions, he's like a lot more normal a human being. So it's just like the writing itself isn't all that consistent. Okay. Um, do you have any other uh, other other games you wanted to talk about, or um, uh, any interests or life uh, <laughs> <laughs> life events? No, I mean that's not my thing to talk about. Yeah. no like, problem. All that you young people, you go listen to me. I, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, know, we're just all, um, yeah. I'm we're we're running a, we're we're running toward the end of our uh, of our questions okay. here. But um, uh, what's something you worked on 
that that you're really really proud of or you just really really enjoyed working on it's like the uh the one thing where you want to show off and just like hey i did this zero yakuza zero is like i'm really proud of that okay um nice. i did all the, i did all the sub stories on those and those were fun to do and then oh, the yakuza games are a lot of fun and then hmm. Monsters 2 was fun. That I was, was a too, yes. Monsters 2 was excellent. I, yeah, I, like, Monsters 2 is way better than the first one. I was I was actually oh, yeah. kind of sad that the remake of that was not released here. Yeah. Yeah. Well that was yeah, one was done by ADOS, right? Mm -hmm. but, yeah. yeah. What well, was didn't have anything to do with Enix USA or anything like that. So yeah. Yep. But yeah, I mean I was allowed a lot more with Enix let me do a little anything I pretty well wanted, and if I could justify it, then it was going in. So yeah, so you know they they gave me free reign to do whatever the hell I pleased on Tornado and stuff, and no, that was fun. And that's why Enix was like chaos, but it was it was the most fun we had working on games. Yeah, I love Torneco as well. That that's one I played in anticipation of uh, of Dragon Warrior Seven coming out, and I had a lot yeah. of fun with that. Well, it's just like, but it sucks, man. PlayStation, the official PlayStation magazine, they said, well, I, you know, I looked up the Tornado reviews. Okay, I, you know, I always look up my own reviews. And then, uh, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, what is that? OPM, the second worst PlayStation game of all time. And, you know, okay, <laughs> Which is go. not true. There are <laughs> many PlayStation games like, like, way, oh, way worse. You know, yeah, <laughs> you guys don't know shit about roguelike. <laughs> which is which is oh, funny man. because now because now the mystery dungeon games come out and they have one for practically every franchise now, and they get pretty solid. They they're they're received pretty well. Get pretty solid solid reviews, and I was just yeah, like, you guys yeah, hated this. The, yeah. What's going on? A lot of the same yeah, mechanics. Game was a lot of fun. Yeah, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I I enjoyed doing a lot. Those were really, really well written games. Uh, does it sting when there's a game that that you just poured so much into, especially especially with your arm in a sling, and it just doesn't it doesn't sell well for whatever reason, or it gets a bad review? Just like, does that kind of get you sometimes? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so just say what the hell you don't know anything about how roguelikes work <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, well I, I just I, I lost and I blew my stack earlier well, last year when a couple of uh, Pokemon Pokemon guys you know podcasters did spend like a week on, on the mystery dungeon games and the first so I said oh, okay that's well, kind of neat I'll check it out and the first thing they go well these games suck. <laughs> okay, thanks. And they go, we've never played roguelikes, but is this what this supposed to be like? And it's like, oh, fuck, you don't even know these games? And you call yourself Pokemon experts? <laughs> well, it's like, out of here. You're on my ban list. Fuck off. <laughs> Fake game of Google. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how, how would you say the job of, of being a translator or localization um, uh, working in localization, how has the job evolved over the years? Mm, it's gotten a lot easier because of Google, right? You know, we could just, if there's words, uh, if there are concepts and words that I don't understand, I could just chuck them into Google and see what, the, what it's about. You go, oh, it's like, it's a, it's a drug or it's like a sword type or it's a pole arm or, you know, and how do you spell pole arm? Is that one word or two or, you know, et cetera. Yeah. And the way it, it helps. And then look, Google Translate, DeepL, I use those too. I throw words in there just to see what comes up and see, you know, because sometimes they do have words that are like, boom, that's it. That's the word. That's, all, that's you know, it's a tool. Yeah. Now, I don't understand some people are like violently against, you know, translation software, but for me, I'm a, as a translator, it helps. Yeah. I, just, too, I don't understand why those developers don't come talk to translators more because we can make the best use of that, that stuff. We mm -hmm. can see what 
Celtics, we can see where they went wrong. Right. We can fix that. But no, they want to go, they want to cut out the middleman, cut out the translator completely. And that's the wrong approach. Hmm. You know, yeah, I think there's still a lot lost in translation with those, with those programs. So I think that's where that kind of, uh, yeah, there, there's no way. You, there's no way you can get away with it. Well, if you've seen following my my Twitters, I write bilingual puns all the time because mm. I like. Well, it's just more for annoying my mutuals. But um, there's no way in hell you can translate the gags I'm making, and that's why I mean, and just like you know, because I I like defeating translation software, but it's just you know for me fucking around, right? I'm fun. Hmm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, well, that's all the questions I have. Dwayne, do you have anything else you wanted to, to ask off the top of your head? Um, you know what? I think, I think I've thought of everything right now. Of course, once we stop recording, I'll think of about 10 more questions, but yeah, right yeah, now, I know that, that always happens. <laughs> yeah. I'm always here. I mean, I'm you know, I'm not here. Oh, uh, what you you your Twitter handle is Doug Dinsdale. Is there a story yep, behind yeah. that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, like, well, I'm under my own name now. I Doug Dinsdale is at underscore Dinsdale, but yeah. But otherwise, yeah, I, I stopped using Doug Dinsdale as a handle because. Well, it's just, you know, I'm better known now, I guess. And uh, too many people were going, well, why are, you handling, why are you using a white man's name? And, you know, they all got all weird racist about that. So I'm just like, oh, <laughs> Were they called <laughs> Annex Farmers? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, if you could send me the uh, link to the uh, the new, well, the new latest Enix forums. Uh, forums yeah, place, yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the Enix Pro boards. Yeah, we'll definitely have that linked in the uh, in the show notes, and I'll send it out to you as well. Yeah, well, just, you just, you know, DM me. Cool. Okay. All right, well, that's it for this episode of Slime Time. We do want to thank Nav for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, thanks, this is, thanks for having me. This was fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, this was such a big part of um, of our young adulthood, let's say, like the, these forums. Oh, definitely. And, uh, and we just want to thank you so much and apologize at the same time for everything you had to deal with. No, um, no, 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 no. It was all good. It was all oh, that's fun. Great. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, that's fun. great to hear. Well, that's all that matters. So, yeah, no. Uh, no, thanks very much for having me. I mean, it was a yeah. pleasure. Awesome. Um, so we don't use Patreon, but if you have, an, if anybody has any money you'd like to donate, uh, consider checking out the Dragon's Den at www.wudis.com slash den and click on support this site. Uh, Wudis has owned and maintained the Dragon's Den fan site for over 20 years and would appreciate any donation. Uh, you can also use his Amazon affiliate links um, on the Den uh, to make any purchases and a small fraction will go uh, from that sale on Amazon to support the Den. Uh, you can advertise with us by reaching out at slimetimepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any comments or questions for us, you can find me on Twitter at realmacelestrian. Uh, or at DQ Slime Time, and Dwayne is available as well. Uh, Dwayne, you're on Instagram. Yes, I do not have Twitter. No. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dwayne, what's your what's your Instagram handle again? Uh, it's really simple. It's Dwayne Art D W A I N E A R T. Cool. Okay. You can find a link to my official store. Uh, I'm working on a book right now, which is why you don't see a lot of regular Instagram posts or or DQ Shrine updates, sadly. But mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I always put book updates on my on my Instagram stories. So so like if you're ever bored, just check my Instagram every couple of days and you can see what page I'm working on. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Consider joining in tons of Dragon Quest discussions of the Dragon's Den forums, one of the few remaining DQ forums still around. Uh, find it on the, uh, besides the Annex Pro boards, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> find it uh, from the Dragon's Den main page at www.wudis.com slash forums. Uh, we know we're always posting, uh, just keeping people up to date, seeing what's, uh, what's going on 
in the Dragon Quest world, either there or uh, on the Dragon's Den Discord as well. Um, we'd like to thank everyone that made this possible, like Rudis, for his support of the series of this podcast. He does an amazing job with editing the YouTube versions, um, and he's owned and operated the Dragon's Den uh, for decades. Um, if you're looking for more Dragon Quest Slime time, check out earlier episodes on Dragon's Den, Anchor FM, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and more. Thanks to Amanda Lepre and the Descendants of Erdrick for allowing us to use their music for our, our podcast. Uh, Descendants of Erdrick is a video game tribute band from Austin, Texas. Check them out in their most recent album, Advent, at www.descendantsoferdrick.com or on Twitter at D of Erdrick. And check out Amanda Lepre streaming on Twitch. So long, everybody. Dragon Quest Bye. Slime time sliming off. Thank <laughs> you.